Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is introduction to the new pushover analysis add-on. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the Dluba website, German and English webinars, newsletter, and so on. I will be the moderator today and will answer your questions together with Thomas. Yeah, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Stefan Frenzel. I'm here at Lubal uh, for the product uh, engineering of the dynamic analysis modules or add-ons and of course for the customer support. Yeah, uh, I will introduce you to the new add-on today in the pushover analysis and yeah, my colleague will answer the questions. Thomas? Yeah, hello. I'm Thomas Eichner. I'm also now working at Lubal for about eight months. And I'm also working on the dynamics field. So I'm helping to implement the, the pushover add-ons or the dynamic add-ons. And I'm here to answer your questions today. So have fun with the webinar. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. I say something about uh, how you can ask questions yeah, for the attendees who participate the first time, you can show or hide the control panel with that arrow here, and then you can enter a question here, and we will answer you. If you don't get an answer during the webinar, because there are too many, you will get an email afterwards. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at global.com. Okay, that's all from my side. I hand over the screen to Stefan. Stefan, it's your turn. Yeah, okay. So, sorry, uh, we are on this page. <laughs> okay, so let's start for the webinar today. So, my uh, our content or the content of the webinar should be here in the first part, an introduction of the pushover analysis add-on, which we now implemented in RFM6 and RSTAB9. The second part will be uh, we want to create or we want to uh, yeah, create a structure where we want to use the N2 method, which is according to the Eurocode 8. In the third part, we I want to show you the results of the pushover analysis and, of course, the evaluation of the results. Um, then I want to show you, of course, another example, which is out of another material. Uh, just to show what non-linearities are working here in the program. And then, of course, I will give you an outlook of the of other calculation methods, which will be coming soon in the pushover analysis add-on. So first of all, we want to start here with an introduction of the add-on of the pushover analysis. And here, of course, what is a pushover analysis? So the pushover graph represents, of course, the structures that structure's ability to resist lateral forces or lateral loads and therefore it's also called capacity curve. So you can see it here in the graph. You have here a base shear displacement graph uh, where you can see of course the nonlinear behavior of the structure with the first part which is nearly linear and then here of course a part which is nonlinear. So we put this graph and or we recalculate this graph to a spectral acceleration of spectral displacement graph. And here, of course, we get, or we will get the pushover uh, point or the performance point of the structure for an elastic spectra with, of course, an inelastic spectra, which is out of, which, which is a result by the pushover analysis. So how we, uh, how we can perform a pushover analysis, yeah? That's also an important question. Um, therefore, we have in the program uh, a specific way in this case. Yeah, uh, we want or we determine, of course, the elastic response spectrum of the structure. So, the elastic response spectrum is, of course, caused by the where, where is the building located. Yeah, of course, and therefore we can uh, calculate it according to the euro code. Afterwards, we have to create a dynamic system. So that means we have to calculate, of course, the modal, uh, the modal eigenvalues of the structure. And after that, 
we have to um, determine the nonlinearities in the structure to calculate a, a pushover curve or a capacity curve in this case. So with this capacity curve, we have, of course, to create an equivalent single degree of freedom system, so an SDOF in this case. And with this SDOF, we can um, do the design according to the N2 method, which is here implemented in the program. So with this target displacement, we can have a look then afterwards on the structure and can, of course, uh, see how big is the displace displacement or how how are the nonlinearities are working in this case in in this load step and yeah and afterwards we check of course the existence of the target displacement so because the euro code says we have to or the maximum displacement of our structure what we want to consider uh, is 1.5 or is is uh, two two times uh, the displ maximum displacement divided by three. So that means three divided by three, uh, two divided by three displacements in millimeters of the whole structure. So if you see here on the right side, we will calculate at first the capacity curve, and then we want to do here a bilinearization of the whole structure. That means we have here a linear part in the beginning of the structure, and here, of course, a horizontal part and the energy which uh, is in the system, so that's the whole energy and the, the linearization um, is calculated by these small areas which are here. This is one, oh, sorry. Sorry, which is here and area number two is here and these two areas have to be uh, have to be have to ha have to be the same or have the same value at the end, and then we have here this bilinearization. With this bilinearization, we can go in in the calculation for the N2 method, and of course, here we can then then we, there are normally three or well, we can have three results at the end. So the first one is we are in an elastic region. That means the non-linearities non didn't working here in our structure. Then it could be that we are we we have an inelastic or we in an inelastic region. That means the non-linearities are working, and we have to we need to look on the displacement in this case. So that's just some words for the theory. Uh, now we want to go here in the R star nine model. Here in our first example, we want just to have a look on the steel frame structure, which is here in the 3D. And as you can see here in the structure, we have uh, complete rigid connections in this case. Yeah, We have also here uh, supports, which are completely rigid. So with no degrees of freedom. Okay, so, but how we can perform now pushover analysis? At first, if you want to perform a pushover analysis in RSTAP 9 or in RSTAP in RFM 6, we have here in the base data to do to do to activate the add-on module pushover analysis. So if we activate here the add-on pushover analysis, the program will activate automatically the model analysis because the model analysis is needed for the calculation of the pushover curve in our case because we calculate the pushover curve or the capacity curve according to the eigenvalues of the structure, of the, of the linear eigenvalues of the structure. So then we can here click on OK, and we see here in the navigator that we get, of course, here pushover analyzer settings, and that's normally all, because the rest is also given in the structure. And at first we want to create now some nonlinearities in the structure because now the structure works completely completely linear because we don't have anything which is nonlinear in the structure. For this example, we want to use uh, member hinges. And of course, here we can create member hinges. And using these member hinges, it's really easy. So we can say, okay, we want to have a member hinge 
but just for the nonlinear calculation, so for the linear calculation, we don't need this member hinge because we want to calculate it first, um, the eigenvalues of the structure, and yeah, we don't need any nonlinearity because the nonlinearity is or don't works in this case. Yeah? So it's therefore, we create nonlinearities at first just for the uh, capacity curve calculation. And here you can see what nonlinearities are uh, available in the program. So we have, of course, a diagram or plastic bilinear, or plastic diagrams, and we have also plastic femur hinges. And here in our case, we want to have a plastic femur hinge. So of course, for the uh, around the y-axis and around the z-axis in this case, here we can see, of course, uh, the acceptance criteria, acceptance criteria in this case, and here, of course, um, the yielding criteria, what we want to have, because here we can have a look how the uh, plastic diagram is working here. So from A to B, from B to C, from C to D, and at our maximum, um, our maximum rotational degrees or rotations, what we have given here. So these this, these values are calculated for each member um, alone. So for each member, the, the diagram will be calculated. But we have to define the diagram just once for all members. Yeah? Because the, these values here um, are what the, the cross sections are considered for these values, and that's done automatically in the program. So here we can click on OK at first, and then we can we have now here a blue what, the blue uh, a blue member hinge because this member hinge is not used in the structure. In our case, we want to define now these member hinges. So therefore, I just want to activate here in the program um, for the members the. member orientations, and with this member orientations, it's really easy for us to create, of course, the hinges, because we want the member hinges here, of course, at the start of the structure. It means here in this way, on this case, in this, on these members and these members, and of course, uh, on our vertical members. Here we want to create the hinge. Therefore, we can say, okay, from the member start, we can create here directly the hinge. So the hinge is here created uh, globally, but works of course locally. So for each member works the hinge in another way, caused by the cross sections. So the other members here in this case, you can see that there are HEA 240. For these ones, we want to use also this uh, plastic member hinge according to FEMA 356. And here, of course, we activate the hinge for each uh, or on each side on the member, so from the, for the member start and of course for the member end, and we can say okay. Now you can see in the structure that we created here the or uh, the member hinges by the small hole here in this case, yeah, and that's all for the first from the first thing because now we have our dynamic uh, structure and we have of course our nonlinear structure and one in one model, yeah? And therefore, we can uh, we can do the next step because here we want to calculate at first the eigenvalues of the structure and to calculate the eigenvalues, uh, it's important to create here a design situation and this design situation should be a seismic mass combination. That means for us, the program can calculate the seismic masses for the uh, model mass or for the model analyzes uh, alone, yeah? That means the program creates here a load combination for that. And with this load combination, oh, I will switch it direct to, to third order th theory. That's then, of course, important for the pushover analyzers. So here we want to, we want, or the program should use the masses which are in load case number one and 30% of load case number two. Here, we go back then and create, of course, a new load case, which is not a analy which is not a static analysis, which is in this case, of course, a model analysis. 
So this model analysis we can here activate. And of course, it's possible to select now the combination number one, which is our uh, seismic mass combination. And therefore, we can calculate, of course, now um, the modal values. So therefore, we get, of course, our natural frequency and, of course, the period. But what's more important for us is, of course, here the effective modal mass factor, because the N2 methods say that we need the dominant mode for the N2 method in each direction. And here we have, of course, a dominant mode in Y direction and a dominant mode in X direction if we want to use. We want to calculate it now just, or we want to do a pushover analysis here just for the Y direction. But I show you, I will show you how easy it is to do it also in the X direction if you need it. Yeah. Here in the Y direction, we have, of course, a higher modal mass factor. Maybe this is also more important than the other direction. Yeah. Okay. With this modal mass factor, we can go back to our calculation here. And here we have to define now a, a load combination. Yeah, well, we can do um, well, we can do now our pushover analysis. It means here we create just a model or a new load combination. And for this new load combination, we can choose here now as analysis type the pushover analysis. This pushover analysis here is set it now directly. Uh, the calculation parameters should be here, of course, third order, because we want to. Uh, calculate until the collapse of the structure, and that makes more sense for us. What's important now here is that we uh, use the right direction. We want to do uh, we want to do the calculation in the y direction, and the normalized displacement should be used by the model or uh, automatic by the model shape. So in our case, the program will take the load uh, the, the, mo the mode shape number one to use it. You can also choose your user-defined mode shape if you want to have another one. In this case, the program will use the mode shape with the highest effective modal mass factor. So, next step is that we have a look on the pushover analysis settings. Here in these settings, we can, of course, uh, define some stuff. Yeah, I know it from this structure because, an example, we can start here with a load or with an initial load factor of 10. For the calculation, and we can we want to use here the collapse uh, calculation. That means we want to calculate until the collapse. The automatic selection of the highest node is here used, or the, we have an automatic selection of the highest node, which is here node number 11. But here, if you deactivate this one, you can also choose your um, node manually. As you can see here, the program, the load factor increment is 0 0.1. So the increment, or yeah, the, the load will be increased or increases by 10% in each step. And that's all for this case. Um, the next thing is what we have to do now is to uh, create a response spectra. Here in our case, we need, of course, a uh, according to the standard. And here the important thing is that we use not a design spectra, we have to use the elastic spectra. It's also a spectrum direction, it's horizontal. Um, here the ground type, I would choose for the example just to other. Um, the peak ground acceleration in Germany is normally not so high, but here I want to choose six in this case. And of course, my TC I want to choose manually is here one. Yeah. But feel free, you can also use your values, what you want to use in this case. That makes normally is it no problem. So it's just for the example, because I want to show you the results in this case for this acceleration, caused by the special result, what we can or what will come here in this case. If we go back to main, you see, of course that we have, because I forgot it, uh, what I want to show you uh, is that we use the constant vertical gravity load from the load case or load combination, because we calculated before the mass combination or the mass 
mass load case in this case. And here we want to use, of course, these loads or these masses also for the pushover analysis, which is constant vertically. And then we want to increase the load, of course, just in y direction. Okay, then we can go on calculate. Now the program will, of course, try to solve the whole structure with all nonlinearities which we have in the structure. You see, we start here nearly with 200 millimeters of displacement um, that's caused by our load uh, factor because we started here with a load factor of 10. That's why we get here a higher uh, displacement at first. Now the program will do here, of course, the calculation that takes a little bit. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we just wait this, some, some seconds here. It takes not so long. Because uh, I just can show you here in the N2 method. So because the N2 method has three different results, what we can have, yeah. So the, of course we are here, we, this could be that we are in the elastic region or that we're here in an inelastic region, um, then these values uh, xt, x, xt star is calculated in a little bit in another way than normally in the elastic region. But um, if we find a solution for this calculation, normally the pushover calculation or the N2 method um, is then okay. Um, we just have then a look on the displacement of the whole structure. So if we go back to the calculation here, we can see that we have a load factor of 20.7 now. The displacement is of course increasing. Um, I think we will come to an end in some seconds. Now the load's increasing, of course. And hopefully we'll get a result soon. Okay, I think now we should have nearly the result. And that's also possible that you can say, okay, you would just want to calculate under 300 millimeters in this case. It's also an option, you know, what you can do in this case. Um, but now we want to have a look on the re pushover results because now you get here, of course, pushover results also in the table. And here you see the iteration dm to dt should be smaller than 15%. And here we have 1.7% uh, as difference in it. So that means we have 345 millimeter as um, as uh, maximum displacement for us or as uh, as target displacement. And then of course we can go in the calculation diagrams. So you see that we have here also an option for calculation diagrams. And here we can create of course a new calculation diagram. Therefore we have also different types. Um, we see here that we have a basic 2D diagram and we have also a 2D pushover RDRS diagram. The program will calculate or will create directly the uh, displacement uh, spectra or demand spectrum in this case. And of course, we can have a look here on the demand spectrum. We can have a look on the capacity curve, which is bilinear and uh, on all. That means we have a look here now on the um, capacity curve of the whole structure. Then we see, of course, the uh, bilinearization. 
and we see our DT, DT star, which is which we have to use or which we need here in this case. And we see that we have now, or we are in a small plastic area, we can say, so in an inelastic area of the whole structure. So therefore we have here, of course, um, wait a second. Therefore we have here a displacement of 282. That should be here in the DT 279. So that means in the real deformation of the target displacement, we have 345.9 millimeters. And for this result, we can go here, of course, in the load combination. We can now go in the load increment and we say, okay, we have 345. That means we have a load factor of 60, 17, yeah, this one, 70.3, I would say. That's our uh, load increment, yeah? And you see here in the releases, they are not, they are plastic hinges, diagram zones. They are all yellow. That means for us, if we go here in the, uh, sorry, if we go here in the, hinges back yeah you see here uh, they are yellow that means for us we are in the case a to b so that's not a big problem because that's the linear part yeah and we don't have any plastic um, usage in the structure yeah so for us the structure should be stable in this case and we don't we won't get any problem with it um, but it could also be if the um, if the cake oh, if we do the calculation again in this case, you know, we can go on edit and then we say okay, we copy this case, and here we create also a new response spectra. Uh, we can use here the same one, but not as a design as elastic, and maybe we increase here the reference peak ground acceleration. And of course, we say we want to have here also, oh no, we can take this one. Okay, now we have a higher, res uh, a higher response. And then we can go here, of course, in the calculation and create also a new calculation. We say, okay, please take the value from 20 as first part. So the calculation is done a little bit faster if we do the calculation until the collapse. Maybe we take here just 2%, or no, we can take here 15%, that's okay. And then we can say here, calculate this one. Then of course we should get the collapse really fast because I increased of course the load, uh, the first load factor, which is now 20 and not 10. But it's it's okay for us if we use here a higher load factor because it's just the elastic part of the of the calculation, and we don't need the elastic part here. We just want to see what's happened in the inelastic part of the structure, and therefore we can use, of course, here another load factor. Okay. So now we should get a result in the near future. Uh -huh. So the load factor should be nearly the same than in the other calculation because you just created another result or another response spectra, which has, of course, a higher a higher values, but now we get 26.1. And now you see, of course, here in the structure that we have here some orange, orange uh, 
uh, hinges. So that means we are in another area of the hinge. So we are now in the area from B to C at the end. And we have here also the exit tense criteria, which can say us, okay, is it okay or is it not okay? In this case, that we can have a look here in the hinge. For the immediate occupancy, life safety, that means for us, okay, it's life safety collapse prevention we don't have here in this case. And we are here from B to C in this case. And that's okay for us. Um, if we go back to the diagram with a load increment of 26, so that means we have here also just 346 millimeters DT. And we can create now also a new calculation diagram. That's really easy. Just go on at it, create a new one or copy the old one and say, okay, we want to see it for load combination number two. You see that we here, of course, also in an inelastic or in the, we are here uh, in the inelastic uh, uh, response spectra, but normally also just with a plastic value in this case, uh, with an elastic value because we are here in the first part of the uh, prelinearization. So that means for us also that it's okay. Um, and you can use this result also to have a look now. You can say also you can go in the uh, in the load increment 26. You see that you have here 1,100 millimeters and uh, two multiplied with 1,100 divided by three is of course bigger than our maximum displacement, our target displacement. And that means for us, according to Euro code, we are on the safe side. So we can use here, of course, this calculation and also with this response spectra for um, the design according to Euro code 8 for the N2 method in the pushover analysis. So as you saw here now in the structure or in, in R stop 9, we, do, we did the calculation for members. So for members, is it normally really easy because you just have to create some hinges which have a non-linearity. So now I want to show you, of course, uh, RFM6, because in RFM6 we are also able to do it for other non-linearities. Here in our case, I want to show it to you for um, a masonry material. And this masonry material has also an orthotropic uh, stiffness and also orthotropic uh, values of course, for the ultimate compressive strength and for the ultimate tensile strength. And with this nonlinearity, uh, the program is also able to do a pushover curve or a calculation according to the, uh, to the Euro code. Therefore, you just have to calculate the whole structures, uh, the whole structure, yeah. You can see it here, it's a, a complete masonry building. Wait a second, I can show you the rest of the structure, yeah, where you have, of course, some concrete here in it. And of course, the rest here, the, the walls are made out of masonry. And of course, some result members are also in. And here, of course, the whole structure, the concrete is here with a linear material behavior, but the masonry is here with a nonlinear material be behavior. And here is it also possible to do a pushover analysis. Looks like this. You have also the pushover analysis. You have also a response spectra. The, the, the way how to create the pushover analysis is always the same, yeah, because the whole, the whole calculation depends just on the nonlinearity of the structure. So you have, of course, to define the nonlinearity that could be here a material nonlinearity, that could be, of course, a member nonlinearity or nonlinear member hinges. It could be also nonlinear supports. Yeah. So everything which could, which could be nonlinear in the structure could be used here, of course, for a pushover analysis. Um, the pro or the the diagram here in this case looks a little bit looks has another or well, looks a little bit in a different to the other one that's of course clear but here you can see also that our TC is here at the end and our DT target 
is here, of course, in a small linear or in a non-linear part of the structure. But therefore, we can go back also according to the diagram. We can go, wait, so in this case, we can also go back to the values of the pushover analysis. And here for the values of the pushover analysis, we can take a look here in the DT. That's for us 5.74 millimeters. And if we go here in the results for the pushover analysis, and we just want to show, of course, the, the walls, the outstanding walls, right? Sorry. In this case, Okay, then we are able to go back, of course, in the in the deformation DT, which is our target displacement. So 5.7 millimeters. That should be oh, that's, that's nearly at the end. 7.2, 5.7. You can go here and load increment 5.6 maybe or 5.7, uh, 5.8, that's not so important. But here in the uh, load increment 5.8, uh, we can have a look on our basic stresses, which you can see here now. Um, therefore, we have here a control panel. Uh, there we can have a look on the stresses for the surfaces. And of course, we, have to, we, need, we need a look on the basic stresses which here are completed okay, because therefore you can have a look, of course, in the material behavior. And you see here in the material behavior, our maximum sigma x stress could be 0 0.24, and of course, in the other way, in the other direction, 0 0.1. And here for the y direction, 2.5 and 0 0.067. So here in our case, that's okay. And of course, we can have a look here in the sigma y. And of course, in the minus direction. Yeah, so on the other side of the surface, where we can have also a look on the stresses. Yeah. As you can see here. So here we have, of course, some tensile stress in the structure, but this is a small stress and this stress is also okay for the whole structure. That means for us the calculation is also okay because the maximum displacement is also here in this case should be the maximum displacement at 20 point 21.7 millimeters and our our target displacement is 5.7. So of course that's also okay. So it means the displacement is okay and the stresses are okay for the whole structure and therefore um, the structure is stable enough for the pushover analysis. So the whole calculation is always done now here for the N2 method according to the Euro code. Um, we want to implement in the near future of course the capacity curve method um according to fema or atc 40 um but i think that will take a little bit will take some time for that um that is of course planned for the near future for the pushover analysis um so you can say normally it's possible to do the pushover analysis with the whole program and of course according to the n2 method other methods will come I think during this year or during the start of the next year. And we will, of course, um, bring some new advantages in the future for the pushover analysis. Okay, so that's what I want to show you today. Um, Andreas? Yeah, thank you, you for the here? nice presentation, uh, Stefan. Hmm? I would like to hand over the screen to me. I say only some words before I show you where I can find the recording. Yeah, if you have questions to any add-on or our main products, RFM6, RSTAP9, and so on, our wind, you can get your free 
uh, online appointment, for example, a free product demonstration, or you can get a non-binding offer as you want. Uh, if you want, just contact our sales team. You can click on that link or scan that QR code. You can also download this, uh, sli these slides from our website together with the recording. I can show you where you will find it in the next days. Our website, lubal.com, and then news and events. Here are the webinars. So that's today's webinar. Next week, we present, uh, we will present a geotechnical webinar, then an American webinar about code formed steel design. New features in steel add-on on, on uh, 29th June. Then our most frequently asked questions webinar. So, okay, that's today's webinar. I click on it. In the next days, you will get an email with the link to that page. Then you will also get your <clears throat> attendees certificate and you will, will find the recording in the middle here. You already find the presentation slide or presentation slides here and you will find the models yeah just the next days okay that's also all from my side maybe a last hint when you leave the webinar where is a small survey it takes you only one minute i think just note that the worst score is one and the best score is five just as you uh, give stars. Okay, yeah, you can enter wish for future webinars, for example. If you don't have any wish, yeah, just enter any signs or sign uh, such as minus also, uh, or leave it empty as you want. Okay, then thank you for your attention. Thanks to Stefan for this nice presentation. And uh, thanks to Thomas for answering the questions. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Maybe we meet each other in a future webinar. Bye-bye.